Which one is right for you, a traditional TSP or a Roth TSP? In this segment, I'm going to give you the tax breakdown of your traditional TSP. You need to first understand how traditional TSP can help you reduce your taxes now, but you will owe taxes later on in your retirement. Uncle Sam will want his fair share when you hit your retirement age. The first thing you should know is what's actually on your pay stub. And did you know that CNBC did a survey and that over 45% of Americans don't understand what's actually written on their pay stubs? And this is too true because I was definitely one of them because no one ever showed me how this worked, right? So a lot of people actually ended up getting underpaid or overpaid without noticing it, especially in the military. If you're serving in the military, you know what I'm talking about. And I teach this in my private client program. So if you're interested in becoming a part of that to talk about your pay stubs or your TSP, you can schedule your free session with me for 20 minutes by visiting RiseHitler.com slash coaching. What you earn from your employer is your gross earnings, which means it's your income before taxes and deductions. So if you're in the military, you're going to get paid on the 1st and the 15th if you're on the active duty status. Most federal employees get paid every two weeks. And I know some federal employees have a different pay schedules, but a vast majority of them get paid every two weeks or 26 times per year. And while active duty military gets paid 24 times per year. And for the pre-tax deductions, it means that these deductions are coming out of your gross earnings based on your hourly rate or your base pay. So the contributions you make to the traditional TSP is gonna be in pre-tax dollars, which means that you're putting those dollars in the TSP before you pay your taxes. And if you're a federal employee, you'll have to make some contribution towards your pension plan. And the contribution rate for your pension will depend on when you join the federal government. If you joined after 2014, then you're most likely on the 4.4% rate under first freight. That doesn't apply to people in the military because they don't need to contribute to their military pension plan. You can also contribute to your HSA and FSA in pre-tax dollars, but keep in mind that you can't have a combination of both HSA and healthcare FSA. If you already have an HSA, you can do what's called a limited expense healthcare FSA which covers the out-of-pocket costs for dental and vision only. You just can't do the straight up healthcare FSA and HSA at the same time. There's a difference between limited expense healthcare FSA and healthcare FSA. And I used to have an HSA and dependent care FSA at the same time. And the healthcare premiums, dental insurance, and certain group term life insurance are also contributed before taxes. Your federal employee life insurance or FEGLI is actually in after-tax dollars, but the SGLI for the military is in pre-tax dollars. So keep in mind that all of these contributions will lower your taxable income already. And have you ever noticed how you have a gross earnings and a taxable earning on your pay stub? Your taxable earnings are the dollars that are taxable after all of these pre-tax deductions, okay? So if your gross earnings are $5,000 in this week's paycheck, and your pre-tax deductions are a total of $1,000, then your taxable earnings are actually $4,000. So you're not gonna be taxed on $5,000, but you're gonna be taxed on the $4,000 after all of these deductions, okay? And I'm gonna talk about the after-tax deductions in tomorrow's video, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't done that already. The tax deductions will come out of the tax earnings after all of the pre-tax deductions. So the government will take the standard 7.65% in FICA tax for your social security and Medicare. Sometimes it'll say OASDI or something like that. Essentially the same thing, okay? And your employer is also gonna withhold your federal and state income taxes based on your filing status. So if you haven't done that already, be sure to update your W-4 if you have any updates to your marital status or the number of dependents you have in your household. In this scenario, let's assume that you are 35 years old and single, making $100,000 a year from the federal government. Your standard deduction for 2024 is 14,600, and you decide to contribute $15,000 to your traditional TSP. Because you're delaying paying taxes on the traditional TSP, your taxable income is gonna be reduced from $100,000 to 70,400 after you take out the standard deduction and the traditional TSP contribution. So. The first 11,600 will be taxed at 10% or $1,160. The next $35,550 will be taxed at 12% or $4,266. And then the next $23,250 will be taxed at 22% or 
$5,115. So the marginal tax rate is at 22%, okay? I did a video similar to this about a month ago. I still get a bunch of comments. People are really confused about the progressive tax system. Just because you're making $100,000 a year, you don't get taxed all 24% of your income. That would be crazy, right? It's the progressive tax system. The first 11,600 is gonna be taxed at 10%. The 15% contribution you make to the TSP, traditional TSP, let's say for $15,000 will save you $3,300 in taxes today because $15,000 multiplied by 22% in the marginal tax rate is $3,300. So assuming that you have 25 years until you turn 60 years old with a 2% annual increase in inflation and 8% average annual return from the stock market, you should have about $1.4 million dollars invested in the TSP by the time you turn 60 years old. You can always download my TSP calculator for it free by visiting advisorchain.com slash resources if you want to fact check me on that. So that 1.4 million in the traditional TSP is your taxable income when you retire, right? So let's fast forward 25 or 30 years into the future when you're retired. This example shows that you're going to retire as a single individual and not married. And let's assume that your pension income is gonna be about $30,000 a year after all the deductions, and your traditional TSP is about $40,000 a year with a million dollars invested using the 4% withdrawal rate. I'm just gonna use the 1 million, not the 1.4, okay? So your retirement income is 70% of what you made when you work with $100,000 a year, okay? So 70% of your income. Because you contributed to the traditional TSP, you delay paying taxes on your TSP contributions and earnings. So your total taxable retirement income will be $70,000 a year. And I'm going to use the 2024 tax rules. So your standard tax deduction is going to be $14,600 as a single individual. What this means is that the first $14,600 you earn from retirement is going to be tax free. You start getting taxed at $14,601. That makes sense? And if you're over the age of 65 or legally blind, your standard deduction will be even higher. The first 11,600 of your taxable income will be taxed at 10%. And then $35,550 of your taxable income will be taxed at 12%. Then you have the remaining $8,250 of your income taxed at 22% or $1,815. So the total taxes you will have to pay under the 2024, keep that in mind, 2024, not 25 years from now, is $7,241. And if I divide that by the taxable income, it's about 13.1% in effective tax rate. But the marginal tax rate would still be at 22%, which is the highest marginal tax rate you will have to pay with $70,000 a year in retirement income as a single individual. The biggest factor is that you're retiring as a single individual. And I'm not by any means saying that you should get married to lower your taxable income, but that's just how the IRS sets the tax brackets. If you're looking to retire as a single individual and you don't want to pay any more than 12% in marginal tax rate, that $8,250 theoretically will need to come out of the Roth savings. And it makes sense because you'd be paying $1,815 out of that $8,250 to the IRS. Again, this is the 2024 tax brackets. These tax brackets will be raised, right? In a good way, not in a bad way. And using Roth just for the 22% portion could potentially save you thousands of dollars in taxes in retirement. And keep in mind that these tax rates, again, are assuming that you're retiring in 2024. So the inflation adjustment is going to put these tax brackets much higher. The only unknown factor is that Congress could completely revamp the tax system by then. So who knows what will happen in the future, right? So to me, if I were to retire as a single individual based on the current tax brackets, it would make much more sense to me to use a Roth to pay for my retirement later on. This is a very generic scenario. So Make sure to run your own scenario because your tax situation could be much more complicated than mine. The other factor will be your pension income could be higher or even lower depending on your current income. Let me run another scenario. And let's assume that you're going to retire as a married couple filing your taxes jointly. And I'm going to assume that it's going to be the same pension income with $30,000 a year from the federal government. And I'm also going to assume that your plan to take $40,000 a year from the traditional TSP. So your retirement income is 70% of what you made when you worked with $100,000 a year. The standard deduction is double for married couples. So with 
29,200 in standard deduction, the taxable income would be $40,800. And the first 23,200, I told you the tax bracket will be a lot higher, it will be taxed at 10%. And the rest of 17,600 will be taxed at 12%. So the effective tax rate right here will be $4,432 or 10.86%. That is a lot lower than those who retire as single individuals. And the marginal tax rate will remain at 12%. So if you're looking to retire with $70,000 a year in income as a married couple filing your taxes jointly, then it might make sense to invest in traditional TSP because your marginal tax rate in this scenario is at 22% when you're working and then it becomes 12% when you retire. Let me give you one more scenario. Let's say you're going to retire with federal employee retirement pension, a social security pension, and you have a sizable amount in your traditional TSP with 29,200 in standard deduction, 123,500 would be the maximum to maintain the 12% marginal tax rate, assuming that you don't have any additional deductions, okay? And based on the 2024 marginal tax rates, the first 94,300 is taxed at 10% and 12%. So your effective tax rate would be between the two at 11.5%. And the people who plan for retirement know that the first dollar of 123,500 is taxed at 22%. Again, this is based on the 2024 tax rates. These dollars will go up because they will be adjusted for inflation every single year. It could be 126,000 next year or maybe $130,000 in the year after. So is it a big deal if you slightly go over 123,500? Not really, because you're just taxed 22 cents for the 123,500 first dollar, right? But if you think you're gonna have significantly more income during your retirement and you only invested in the traditional portion of your TSP, then you could use a Roth IRA to supplement your retirement income. Maybe using the Roth IRA could prevent you from going 22% to 24% or from 24% to 32%. And I know these are very generic scenarios, but I hope it gives you a certain direction on how to decide whether you should continue investing in the traditional TSP, Roth TSP, or a combination of both. And if you stay tuned or subscribe to my channel, I'm gonna give you the breakdown of how the Roth TSP is taxed now and how it becomes tax-free later. In the meantime, don't forget to download all of my financial calculators for absolutely free by visiting fireside.com resources. Mm -hmm.